Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333, and welcome to Nano Leads at Dawn, the September 2015 tournament. Or 2000, hey, September 2015 1v1 tournament. And it is. A, well, it's a larger tournament than last time. So we are basically about to start up, and we're starting out with Lori and El Torero. But we also have. Hono and Drone will be playing as well. We're still waiting on Stuart and Snuggle Base, so at the moment it's a little bit slow going. Unfortunately, neither of them are here yet. Stuart, I'm not terribly surprised because they are North American. I recall them saying something about not being sure if they can make it on time. Snuggle Base, on the other hand, is in Australia and has no excuse. But yeah, we will be doing Lorin El Torero as soon as the as soon as they get set up, which will be on Isle of Grief. So we'll just, rather, game one will be an Isle of Grief. And that should be starting fairly soon. This is... Hmm. Sorry, one sec. This is going to be a little bit... This is going to be a little bit... Not actually that different. It's not going to be much, much different. It's just a little bit smaller than I expected. To be quite honest. I was kind of hoping that it would be... a bit more populated. But then again, it was actually fairly recent that a bunch of people joined up. So, And also, there's only like two people not here. That's pretty typical. And it looks like we might be replacing Snuggle Base with the acronym. At any rate, once we get set up, so Lore and El Terrero are a pretty even match. So I'm very excited to see what happens there. The rest of the matches set up thus far, I think, are a little bit one-sided. I mean, this is slightly random seating, so that's not surprising. Although, Drone and Yogstoth are going to be right next to each other. These are the two favorites to win. Right, really, these two are the favorites to take it. Although, Lore and El Terrero... They'll probably place pretty high. But yeah, Yogstoth and Drone, that's basically going to be the matches to watch. So ideally, once Honu and Drone are done, I can watch Yogstoth and Drone, since this is probably going to be the pre-finals finals. But, of course, this is double elimination, so we may end up with seeing them again in Grand Finals. Assuming, of course, that no one knocks them out in Loser's Bracket, because at this point, one of them is going to go down to Loser's Bracket right here. Right in Brack in O. In group O. They're gonna have to fight all the way through everything back. They're gonna have to fight the three or four matches, all best of one, in order to get back into grand finals. Whoever loses that match. But apparently we're having some technical issues at the moment, which is rather unfortunate, because this is a little, or hardly running a little late. We should be, should be getting going as soon as they're ready. Apparently, small technical issues, which should be no surprise. So yeah, this... Is kind of a favorite to win. They're going to be an Isle of Grief, which is a rather new map. Not one that's... Sh I mean, this is a new map tournament. That is the theme of this tournament is going to be all new maps. All maps which are basically not yet that... I mean, they're kind of fairly well played. But they're still there. So the thing is, it's... It's going to be a little unfamiliar, going to be a little bit new. I've played on some of these maps. I think there's only a couple I haven't played on, and those ones I don't think I'll be showing, just because they're not going to be showing up at the first... Okay, there's one in the Losers Finals. Losers Finals first map I have not played. Everything else I have played, or have seen played. So I have some familiarity with it. And 
And are we gonna... What the... And Lodi has returned. We may now begin as soon as they get started. There we go. And I realized how redundant my just my most recent comment was. That's commentary for you. Redundancy is stock in trade. Alright, so we are going to be, like I said, on Isle of Grief. A rather famine map. There's really not much resources on it. It's... Alright. Yeah, it's not a map that actually has a whole lot in the way of resources. It is a map that has a fairly small overall look to it. Just, It's not particularly big. It's not particularly... Not particularly hilly, it's flat as this big open space, which has been fixed. For anyone wondering about the jump bot thing, if you've seen earlier games, this area here, jump bots can jump into it now, but they can't. shouldn't be able to jump out. I'm not sure if they still can. Used to be you could actually jump from your main base down to the side, like two jumps. Jump in here, jump out there. Apparently now you cannot. I'm fairly certain you could still like jump in here and then walk over to this area and then jump out. But that's nowhere near as effective. The more important thing is you can't really walk in here and then jump onto the base. Which is what this map was designed to do in the first place. But I could be wrong. I know that in general, jump bots cannot jump out of deep water anymore. They can jump into it, just not out of it. And they can jump into it because of scuttles, in case you're wondering why would I let why would the devs let, say, pyros get stuck in the water? Yeah, it's because of scuttles. Scuttles can hit things underwater. Not, okay, El Torero going for a light vehicle factory. Is Lori going to go for heavy tanks, or are they going to go for amphib, or something a little bit more esoteric than that? Nope, light vehicles. Both players light vehicles, so pretty standard. Nothing too unusual at either of this. Either of these players, neither of these players are playing in any way unusual. Probably going to go for a couple darts, a couple of scorchers, yeah. Dart Mason. Actually, I don't even scorch yet. Just Dart Mason. This map, it may be a family map, but it's fairly large. It just doesn't have a lot of resources on it, so you're going to be... Well, it rather chunks out the resources rather conspicuously. So early workers, that's the way you'd go. Like, you're not going to be hit very hard. Your opening base is pretty much impervious to attack, unless your opponent is playing spiders or jump bots. And even then, only really jump bots early on. Spiders can come in, but jump bots are going to be much faster doing so. But neither player is going for that, so it's not really that relevant. And both players are meeting up. They know each other. They know what they're playing. And they're probably not surprised, either of them, because this is a flat map. This is a flat map that's almost fully vehicle-pathable. I think... Oh yeah, it's, it's a fully vehicle-pathable map, so there's no reason not to play vehicles. Especially given the size. Like, it's a big map. Or at least it feels big. I think it's 12 by 12, which is... Oh, 14 by 14. No, this is actually a legitimately large map. 14 by 14, very large for a 1v1. Like, that's almost four times as large as your... as most of the small 1v1 maps that typically are played. Like, 8 by 8 is a typical... So well, 8 by 8 is a small size. This is nearly four times that. But anyway... Oh, I should say, more like 10v10 is, or 10x10 is a bit more, 10v10 is actually the normal game size, sadly, but that's not what we're talking about here. 10x10 maps are also pretty typical, and this is twice that size. And Lori, they know where El Torero is, is expanding to. Are they going to be able to get this metal extractor? Actually, that's one thing. If they do, they would have been even, had they managed to do that, but sadly, not quite able to do so. And I don't think they would have. I think the Scorches would have been there in time. But Lodi appears to be expanding. Are they expanding faster? I think they are. Like, they're spreading out a little bit more in their expansion attempts. But El Torero did start out sooner. And Lodi going... Okay, their commander is 
economy commander, so it's not surprising they're going to the back. El Torrer, on the other hand, yeah, basically forward of their commander, which is pretty typical. So neither player really wants to be aggressive, because this map does not really encourage it. And Lloyd is going to find out they're going to be running in here, and actually both players are going to be dealing with this slow, marshy area. Like this, this shallow water just slows everything down. It's just deep enough to do that. And this is probably going to... Yeah, El Torero is going to win this, just because Lordy can't even micro. Oh, actually, never mind. That retreat just happened to work out, but yeah, it's... There's not much room to micro. But there's also a lot of room to guys hit Lordy going around, like, why is... Okay, so El Torero is going to just get revenge on this, because this is not going to be contested either way. But we have two Lotuses here for Lori. So the Scorches coming in here will have that to contend with. And for El Torero, it's... They haven't set up too much, actually. These Scorches will have a bit of a harder time harassing, but they... Will they be able to take the commander? I don't think so. Light Particle Beam and a Recon Com. It doesn't have a huge amount of health, but it's going to jump away pretty quickly. Yep, yeah, there it is. Into the Lotus. And that was suicide. Wasting three... Oh, wow. How much metal is that? Yeah, 200 metal was donated. Well, 130-ish metal was donated. The rest of that being El Torero's only Scorcher there. But on the other hand, they're doing far better in their assault. No commander to deal with. Just getting rid of metal extractors, masons, lotuses. The commander out back... El Lori's going to have a harder time dealing with this. If I mean, they're going to have to rebuild. They aren't... They're, at this point, it's just... Desperately try to get rid of these Scorchers and then rebuild. That's all they can do. El Torero, on the other hand, they have a pretty healthy, healthy setup. Actually, not even just health. They're they're accessing. Are they long? Oh yeah, wind gens, wind generators. I they're low in power because they have wind generators and they don't have enough to have a stable economy normally, like when they're low. Working on that, but at this point they are accessing, which is never a good thing. And Shikazi pointing out you can't see the player LO. No, this this spectator panel does not allow you to see the player LO. Although I do think it's far more visible for the important economy stuff. Because the two players' LOs are pretty much the same. Or at least they're very close. But El Torero not really able to harass much. These scorches are pretty are gonna be killed. They're one of them might be, yeah, one of them is able to hit. Actually, ooh, wow, they managed to get in and do some damage. But that water really slowed them down to the point of death. Really, other than the Lotuses, which are kind of expected to die, they didn't do much. And Lotus got that reclaim going, so overall, it's still fairly even. El Torero has, however, taken a much greater chunk of the map, which is being contested. But even then, there has been a much larger chunk of the map given El or taken by El Torero. This Lotus, however, completely undefended, so that's, well, for now undefended, but of course El Torero calling that is going to be attacked, and they're wrong. Lori is just running away, because that's the wise thing to do. Like, there's no, oh, what, really? No, seriously, that was the wise thing to do. I wasn't, I wasn't hedging the first time. Lori, you're going the wrong way. Oh, crap, I just realized him. Anyway, you're going the wrong way, Lori. That's... That's not what you want. Yeah, that is... Not what I expected. At all. Lori is going to be... I think losing this match, honestly. And El Ferrero just has, that econ has the territory. It's going to become economy very shortly. They do have a military advantage at the moment, too. I mean, Lori at this point has five Scorchers. El Torero has about eight or so. They can pretty much split up and they'll still win. But at this point, I think El Torero is just going to go for a relatively forward attack and then try to take everything. Possibly to attack the main base. I don't think they will. That would be a little bit foolish. But yeah, they are well set up. I mean, breaking through this, at this point, I'm a little bit surprised. Wait. That crashed on me. I knew something was wrong. But yeah, 
Lori is just going for rapiers. And that... That's all they have right now. One rapier. Basically gambling on making sure that they have this... Like, this is a gamble and a half. I'm a little surprised they didn't build any any Stardust, though, because that would be... Actually, Skydust in particular, like Stardust on Aspire? Why haven't they built that? Neither player has. I I suppose probably because the path is a little bit wide. Like, Skydust would not cover the path. But even then, it's not going to be a terrible idea. And with all the Scorches running around, that would force... That would force El Torero to switch up a little bit. Like, they'd have to respect, essentially, riots. Because they haven't had to. Their Scorchers have been going around with impunity. And while the Rapiers do help, there's going to be Crashers up in a moment. Or maybe not. No, El Torero is not going for the Crashers yet. They're just letting these Rapiers be. Actually, not even that far ahead in economy. Five, like, plus five metal is not, or five metal over is not bad. But they're not that far ahead. Not yet. Especially with the overdrive, and the fact that their overdrive is not particularly strong right now. Because wind. But still, okay, there's the crashers. That's what I was waiting for. Four crashers, that should be enough. These rapiers should be able to take care of these metal extractors. Maybe this one over here. This is the biggest metal. Like, these two here. Those are the ones the rapiers need to be able to deal with. Because the scorchers can't. They really can't. They're just going to be moving far too slowly to deal with that. This expansion here is pretty manageable for the Scorchers, but the one in the water, the Rapiers need to take that. Now, what is Lori... Okay, El Torero knows where Lori is. Knows completely where Lori is. Lori doesn't really know what's going on. They have no idea about the Scorchers, they have no idea about the Crashers. And they are able to get rid of the... Well, they got rid of the Metal Extractors, that's what counts. Losing a Rapier in the process, but they still got rid of those Metal Extractors that they could not have otherwise dislodged. So hey, Lori actually has an in. They have a way back in. They don't need to worry necessarily about that, so they've taken care of the, that economy. If they could jump around to the other side, go behind here, take care of this... This is easy. This is free. If Scorchers get in here, they're gonna kill it. The problem, of course, being that there are no Scorchers left for Lori, having switched over to Slashes a little while ago and being very consistent in their Slasher production. But not set up in the right spot. Did not expect El Torero to attack the western side. And this is where the sky... Well, let me sky us. Just, just Stardust will be able to prove its salt. Or earn its... Prove its worth... Whatever. Anyway, it... Well, Lori's gonna be salty very soon anyway. I mean, just lost the entire western side. I mean, basically, they're even again. Where are the Rapers going off to? Ah, uh, back in the main base. Ouch. It's four down. Or two down, rather. Four left. Now, what these rapiers need to do, of course, is to go around to the other side and start taking that out. Maybe not this so much. I mean, this is, I think, a little bit too risky. For only for three rapiers, it's probably too much. For, sorry, five, four rapiers, it's probably a bit too much. So they will likely die. And Ravager spam coming in from El Torero. It's, what the... Okay, what? There we go. Yeah, Ravager Spam from El Torero, they are going to be... And Leveler Spam, like, they have pushed well into consolidation. Actually, they're just going for the win. These Scorchers tearing everything apart. The Crashers operating as a nice buffer. Just bought, just blocking for the Scorchers, making sure that the Slashers can't easily hit them. And that will probably be the game. At this point, El Torero is going to be rushing into the base. The Scorchers should be able to get rid of the Ravagers, especially with the body blocking. And Crash is providing cover. That is a nice little stretch there from El Torero. Very clever. Not enough, though, actually, from what it turns out. Not quite enough. None of these were targeting any particular Ravager, so they aren't able to actually kill anything. Nice, though. Kill Okay, killed El Torero's commander with the Slashers. And actually, we'll kill the expansion with the Slashers, so there is that one thing. El Torero, however, is much... It's, well, they were stronger economically. And last desperate attempt to get... Well, make use of these Ravagers. Use them as best as possible right at the end. Actually, yeah, four more of these down. They should be fine. 
Although even now, as the economy slows, it will cause El Torero to not be able to use all of their metal. But that's it. I mean, if if the wind slows down, and it's actually picking up. So El Torero has been a bit buffer from that attack, thanks to the wind picking up at the last moment. But as it stands, Lori has gone slightly ahead in economy. The only problem is they have not gotten ahead in military yet. They're working on that. But their, like, their position is not great. El Torero can pretty much attack anywhere. Lori, they have this ball of raptors, which is not that big. But it's still there. They still have a chance. They still have a way in. Hmm. How effective that way will be remains to be seen. Basically, this fight here. That's the thing, These, this fight. A couple levelers mixed in with the Ravagers, but yeah, if Lori wins this fight, and then there is still a game. Otherwise, they'll probably throw in the towel and we'll go into game two. But at this point, I mean, at this point, mixed force from El Torero. Not a terrible idea, but the levelers, they're in there. They will stop the Scorchers. And... Well, splitting up El Torero's forces, Lori might be able to just divide and conquer a little bit here. Unfortunately, not moving forward. Not really able to move forward. The Ravagers are getting very quickly beat up at the start. Did they not rep I don't think they repaired those from the first attack. Yeah, I don't think those were repaired at all. I think that Scorcher attack, the damage has pretty much stayed except for the auto repair. Lori... Neither Lori nor El Torero even able to scratch the other one's army noticeably. Like, one or two units dead here or there. That's not a particularly exciting battle. Not much has happened. The Lodi right now just consolidating a third of the map, which is never a position you want to be in because they are falling behind. The one thing they do have, of course, is overdrive, which is pretty constant thanks to the fusion reactor. And the store is not able to be built up. That was unfortunate. And repair available to both sides as well as El Torero not El Torero is not using the repair. In fact, now the energy is now it's kicking in. The effect of that earlier harassment is now being felt. As El Torero can't really repair because they don't have the energy to do so, and they're having a hard time building as well because of that lack of energy. So yeah, their economy back to being not the most reliable. Still strong enough, but yeah, not the most reliable, and Lori... If they can burst through this, if they can break through this, they might have a chance. It's just, breaking through this is going to be tricky with the two Sky Dusts, as well as this fairly large army here. Twelve, well, twelve Ravagers isn't too large. I mean, Lori does have a much larger Ravager army. And coming in for the flank. Not sure that was intentional, but definitely coming in for the flank, because that's that's what's happening. I think it was intentional. It looked like Lori was baiting out El Torero, which means they were trying to get that flank going. Although, no, actually, more to the point, they're trying to bait it out completely, pulling El Torero out of their nicely defended position, forcing them to attack, because these Ravagers are going around the side. El Torero has to deal with this, and they're going to be advancing into Lori's forces, which you also never want to do, because retreating is just more powerful. Unfortunately, those levelers going down means the Scorchers that are around here on the western side will be able to come in and assist that this fight. Unfortunately, El Torero is in a position where they can pretty much only do a counterattack. And that counterattack is going to be relatively weak thanks to this not being a strong position, right? I mean, this, this is a fairly well-defended position. And these Raptors coming in here, they have nothing. They have no opposition. Well, they have a wall. Which is pretty solid opposition, I suppose. But the, other than that, like, they can basically rip apart everything but the main base. Oh. Of course, a missile silo. Nicely done for... Why is the fact panel dying? What's going on? Not sure what's happening with this thing. Hmm. I'll check that before the next game. Not sure why there's nil lack of nil comparison. That's not the point, though. The point is... Last ditch attempt from El Torero to try to counterattack. Not sure why they attack there and not this defensive position for their Ravagers to get in. 
but Lori can basically just take everything. And... Oh. Did Lord of Italian kind? Yes, they did. They did indeed. We're into the in just infernos, because why not? Fire everywhere. Although, actually, as we discovered in one of my most recent exhibition matches, blowing up an inferno inside the opponent's base will cause it to explode in fire. Which, if fired from range, if it was one inferno causing another inferno to burn up and blow up, that would actually be much safer than sending a handful of levelers as a last-ditch last attempt, as was actually done in that game. Yeah, the, the other thing to point out is, at the moment, El Toledo cannot move out of their base. They don't have any... I mean, they have the air units right now, but they don't have anything else to move out of their base because they have walled themselves in as much as they have walled Lori out. So at this point, Lori is actually surprisingly ahead. <clears throat> El Ferrero's wall was not as effective, and these Ravager, this Ravager ball going around the side, avoiding the defended position, because this area here was never defended, that lane, that was perfectly open. And Lori took advantage of it. Good on them, because that was exactly what they needed to do. At this point, three times the economy. And otherwise, they are doing just fine. Two times the economy, they have shields up for their for the next Inferno coming in from El Torero, which there is none actually. Wavern being the option of choice instead. But now Lori is advancing up from a slow territory into a ball of Ravagers. And doesn't have a nice line on them either. Lori's actually kind of trapped. They, they, they walked into this water, which I don't know why they did that. They got themselves mired in the swamp for no particular reason. Because they, if they'd gone around out here, they would have been able to tear apart the rest of the stuff. Take out the second air factory, because El Toledo decides, why not be redundant? And now the Ravagers go down. A couple Ravagers go down. Not too terrible, but still, that is going to be a bit of a problem. But not much. Lori, I think, still has turned this around. And yes, they have. Lori taking the first match. El Toledo down... Or Lori up 1-0 on El Toledo. They're going to have... Going to have another game in a moment, and it looks like... Oh. So the tournament brackets, it looks like Drone and Honu are still playing their match. So game two will be up fairly shortly. Not sure what map they're going to be playing on, because that is up to El Torero. And yeah, Skazi's Skazi pointing on the chat that Wyvern could have turned this around, and yeah, possibly. I think El Torero just decided they wanted to just call game one and then just not worry about it because they were they were kind of ahead they were ahead in territory they didn't have the military but yes with time the wyvern would have definitely done the early yeah wyvern would have done the job that's true the only thing is i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen there because that that was kind of weird yeah That was indeed kind of weird. I think, like I said, or I was about to say before I got distracted, I think El Torero decided they're just going to go to game two. They don't want to be burning themselves out in game one. Hmm. I think that's what they're up to. I mean, I could be wrong. They might actually just... They might not be bothering with that. Okay, we're going to be on Alien Desert. That is the next map.
Okay, the next map is Alien Desert. It is going to be, not surprisingly, uh, well, kind of surprisingly, Alpha Shadow's choice. I feel like that will work be better for Lori. But we'll see. I mean, I could be wrong. It's just... And they begin. So it is... Thank you. So heavy tanks from Lori, no surprise there. With light vehicles from El Torero, also no real surprise. Right now, Lori is going to be setting up with early Kodachi, early raids. I mean, this is not the biggest map. This is a smaller map than the last one, actually. It... What? Oh. Shoot. Sorry, I must have actually hit the rejoin button from the lobby. I am not in the game. I'm sorry, I... I think I might have misclicked that when I was trying to adjust the volumes. Bear with me. Sorry about this. <sighs> can't believe this. Okay, there we go. That was embarrassing. To say the least. But, hopefully it should be sorted out by now. Alright, back into the game. My apologies, I don't know how that happened. Like I said, it wasn't- or I do know how that happened, I misclicked. I made a misclick and then ended up just getting everything all mixed up. Alright. So. Looks like everything's caught up now, and... Yeah, so Lodi coming in with the Kodachis, doing a decent raiding job. Also building up themselves just fine. So yeah, they are up one game. Which does mean, of course, that they're going to be probably playing a little bit riskier. They don't need to worry too much about whether or not they win this match. Obviously, they want to. But they don't have to worry about it as much. If they lose, well, they have another match to work with. If they win, then they move on. And they fight... I think it's... Who do they fight? Oh, they fight the winner of Cubay and Orphilius. Because as far as I know, Stuart has still not shown up. And indeed, Stuart has still not shown up. And surprisingly, Drone and... Onu have finished up, and Drone and Yogg-Soth are starting up. I'm going to have to get into the middle of that one, I suppose. But I'm sure it'll be worth it, because it's going to be Drone and Yogg-Soth, and that should be, like I said, the finals before the finals. But I digress, because this match is currently in front of me. Not really much that's going on there. Both players just expanding. Nothing too unusual. Trying to find some rating points. El Torero is not going to get a huge amount of success. Lori has set up very defensively. This front area here is probably the only one that's even remotely vulnerable. And even then, that has the commander, so not really. Ooh, but never mind. These Oh, these Scorchers might get lucky. They get rid of the Panther. They should be fine. Bit of a surprise, though. If they can get rid of the Panther, they will be able to tear apart this expansion. Now, then the Kodachi right after it. That's... That's actually kind of unmanageable from the looks of it. Just barely, but yeah, getting rid of two Scorchers, that's enough to keep Lodi alive. Especially with the last Scorcher there being completely annihilated. Absolutely enough to keep Lodi alive. So El Torero is basically neck and neck. I mean, both players econ economically are neck and neck. Neither player has really dealt any damage to the other. They've been able to expand more or less with impunity. But El Ferrero, I mean, they're setting out they're sending out Scorchers when they have chances for timings. Like, when they have expansions coming out and they can deal with them. They are sending them out at good times. It's just, they get intercepted. Lori just knows it's coming. At this point, no, El, El Torero does not have radar of the southeast section. Neither player has enough radar coverage right now to be able to know what the other's up to. So El Torero is just going out for regular raids. Trying to make sure that they are catching everything, making sure that Lori does have to respect their Scorchers. They have to make sure that Lodi isn't just expanding completely naked. And Lodi does indeed respect the Scorchers, setting up defenses everywhere, making sure that they aren't letting anything go free. And this... This is no exception. Another Panther coming in here, which should be able to take care of these Scorchers once again. So it's... 
Yeah, this is not really something that El Torero can do with just three Scorchers. They're going to need to have... Like, if they had left, kept those other Scorchers alive, pulled them back, moved together as eight or nine Scorchers, that would have been considerably more powerful. But at this point, El Torero is not in a great position to raid. The only thing is that they have... While they aren't in a great position to raid, they have made sure that they themselves weren't being raided. Because Lodri, like I said, had to respect the Scorchers. And they still do. There's, there's no change to that. Lodri still has to respect that. Which does give El Torero a lot of breathing room for naked expansion, as we can see right now. It's El, Torero just, El Torero just taking advantage of the fact that light vehicles, as a factory, have the speed advantage. So the early game, they do have a great raiding advantage. Oh. Apparently attrition widget is something I should look into. I... Oh! Huh. Okay. Well, I guess... Wait, is that... No, I have to turn that on at the beginning of the game. Okay, well, I will, I guess, experiment with that in later games. I'm not sure how it'll fit. Aesthetically, I mean. Like, where would I... This is not the best... Spot. Whatever. That's not important. Anyway, El Torero is, like I said, able to just keep Lori defending everything. And the same cannot be said for Lori, though at this point, Lori doesn't seem to care. That's the thing with Heavy Tank. Heavy Tank, you basically are building up kind of slowly, and then you have to press out. To just push out, assault through everything. Or, in this case, Lord is going around with their raiders because they have enough defenses they don't have to worry about Scorchers. They can just move around. Send a Kodachi up to the north. Send some units down to the south. Take care of another handful of Scorchers because why not? El Torero is not able to raid, but they are still able... Well, they are able to raid up here. But Lodri does see it coming. And at this point, Lodri has their entire half of the map known. Same with El Torero. Sorry. Well, Lodi and El Torero are both quite well informed about the goings-on in their territory. And that should get rid of the metal extractor. El Torero did not opt to repair that, but that wasn't that big of a raid. This, however, will be. I mean, this metal extractor, this metal extractor, this metal extractor up here, and that radar tower too. So right now, El Torero has... Yeah, they've lost a lot of radar coverage. They have no idea where the Kodachi is. They really don't know where anything is right now. And Lori over to the south as well. So Lori just pushing out. They have what they need. They have their plus 30 or so metal. So they can build everything relatively quickly. And now they have a very strong assault force. Which is, that is to say, a Reaper. Because at this stage, that's all they really need. There's not much else. Oh, never mind. There is that. But probably not going to be that big of a threat. Should be able to deal with that. But yeah, at this point, Lodri is indeed scary. They have a lot to work with right now. And El Torero is just desperately setting up the defenses. They don't have anything defended over the north, and that's where the naked expansion really isn't working out. Why is this Kodachi just sitting there? This Kodachi is just sitting there. It can tear apart even more metal extractors if it wanted to. Lodri is not paying attention to that at all. Apparently much more focused on the center of the map, or are they? Fairly focused. Okay, there we go. Now the Kodachi's moving. But yeah, that that was another couple of metal extractors that could have gone down for free. Which will now go down for free. So, eh. That works. But a light vehicle switch from... Oh, for crying out loud. What? Ah, shoot. Sorry, uh, apparently a small bug in the factory panel was introduced with the recent team sorting update. How that sorted out afterwards. But at this point, El Torero is... Ooh, they should be able to get rid of this, actually. They should be able to get rid of the Reaper. At least force it back somewhat, but still... Lori is in a strong position. Ooh, wow! No, wait! Wait a sec. Is this gonna... No, nah, it's gonna go down. Almost had it. But it takes a long time to dominate a Reaper. Very long time. So I think that it will be pretty straightforward to deal with this for Lori. 
Like, there's a lot of open space. They just broke through the main defensive line. And everything else is just going to be rushing down. And they basically just go into the main base and tear it to shreds. Not much is stopping them. The few things that are, are well outside of the main base. I mean, all these dominatrices, all three of them are right here. That's it. There are some Scorchers, but that, those are being pretty handily dealt with. A Banisher here would be very handy, because this Reaper is under some threat. Under heavy... About, about to die! Actually, that Reaper is about as... Yeah, just died. Is that Assault Force not quite as impervious as it first appeared? But the Nominatrices, that's the thing. They're still out of position. They're still out of the base. El Togarado is still probably about to lose this. And it looks like we're just looking at Wolverines from Lori. They aren't even bothering with tanks right now, just getting out as many Wolverines as they can. Mining the entire area. So that is definitely going to be a bit of a problem to deal with. But at this point I feel like Lori has kind of left themselves a little bit open. I don't feel like they actually have a whole lot to work with right now because yeah okay they have that they have those those forces there sure the, the Wolverines I mean but that's it they don't have much else and they have the Wolverines they have the Does they have anything? they're not building anything else okay now they're building levelers but they've left themselves very open, and El Torero, realizing this, capitalizes on this, attacking from all sides. Well, expanding to the south, but attacking to the north. The levelers will put a slight stop to this, but even then, Lori is still in a position where they can't really reclaim the way to victory. They don't have enough power to do that with. But not enough damage actually dealt to the center, so unfortunately for El Torero, they can't quite press through. And whatever advantage they had by that timing is gone now that these levelers are being built up. Are we seeing slashers? Are we seeing wolverines? From no, we're seeing ravagers from El Torero from the looks of it. Some emergency ravagers along with all the scorchers they've been building this entire time. They still have a lot of scorchers and these defenses... They're still pretty good against scorchers. That hasn't changed. Nope, the properties of the units in this game do not change on the fly, so these lotuses will still be very effective. Against the Scorchers, that is. Against the Levelers, not necessarily. Sorry, against the Ravagers, I mean. Not as effective, but this center defense section, yeah, that's going to need Missile Silo or maybe Wolverines. Wolverines would help. Missile Silo would just burn it all down. The Ravagers eating those mines. Just tanking those mines and going to regret it. Because that's not going to work out very well at all. Pretty much free Ravager kills for Lori. Well, El Torero loses their commander, and that's... I think that might... I, that might cap it. We'll see. I don't know if El Torero is going to throw in the towel quite... That, there we go. That did. That did indeed cap it off. So that was the first series. That was the quarterfinals, although I kind of have to desperately go over to Yogsdoth and Drone, because Yogsdoth and Drone are likely just now going... I want to get that in and through because that's going to be probably the, one of the better matches. I mean, th this was pretty good. I'm not going to... Not a discredit Lori and El Torero, but... It is still, like, Yogsoth and Drone is still going to be a big deal. But that wasn't it. Where is Yogsoth and Drone? Where is Yogsoth and Drone? I I get that Ophelius and QB are going, but where's Yogstoth and Drone? I don't I don't understand. Hmm. Okay, well anyway, I'm just realizing that I didn't have the proper delay version of this on, so I apologize. I'm going to be back in a moment. Okay, drone went shopping. I'm going to be back in a moment with the game that's Orphelius and... Oh, that's where we're going right now. Mm. 
Okay, forget it. I'll just join this up. We'll deal with the delay stuff after this game. 